Hey guys, this is John Shea, and welcome to Lather Talk, a wet shaving podcast. First, I just want to say that on behalf of myself and Gerard, we hope that you are doing well and staying positive during all that's happening around the world with the coronavirus, and that our podcast can offer at least a small distraction. On today's show, we have special guests Douglas Smythe and Fran Tal, the faces behind Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. We'll discuss how the couple transitioned Phoenix Shaving from a part-time project to full-time, and the challenges associated with running your own business. We'll also get some insight from the couple who have been in the wet shaving game since 2012 about how to get more people into traditional wet shaving. One thing to note is that news of the coronavirus was just starting to emerge at the time of this interview. So while we do talk a little bit about the Big Shave Swest, the meetup was postponed just days after the interview. I hope you enjoy our conversation. And now, on to today's episode. Douglas and Fran, I want to thank you guys so much for uh, giving us your time this evening uh, for the Lather Talk podcast. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah. In your home? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to be here <laughs> at home. The people I love. Right next to the dishwasher. Right next to the dishwasher. <laughs> Conveniently located next to the dishwasher. <laughs> so you guys, um, how long have you been in Phoenix now? Uh, I think it's been just about six years. Oh my God, six years. Yeah, you always get it wrong. Seems like five. Yeah, but it feels like five, yeah. but it's really been six. It's been six. Yeah, I think it's six years. I think we got here in 2014. 2014, yeah. Okay. Yep. It wow. flew by. It really did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't know if, I'm, if I got it right. Are you actually in Phoenix or outside Phoenix? I, I, I forget. We're about an hour south of Phoenix. The actual well, it depends who's driving. I say 45 of, minutes outside of Phoenix. Of Phoenix. <laughs> well, Phoenix, the metro area. Proper. Yeah, yeah. We, if we want to get to um, like Chandler, Arizona, like the closest sort of Phoenix metro city, that's about 35 minutes away. So we're just south. So we're in between Tucson, Tucson. and Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. Prior to moving out to, to Arizona, uh, were you guys in my neck of the woods up in New England? Yeah, yeah, born and raised. And oh. Well, we were in, well, where, where are you? I, I'm just outside Boston in Somerville. Okay, I was in, well, Amherst, Belchertown, Greenfield, uh, Northampton. I was in Western okay. Mass for oh, three oh, nice. years. Yeah. And I was on and off in Western Mass, went to college out there. I'm from Long Island originally. Um, and then, and then I've lived all over the place. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were in Greenfield before we came out here. Yeah, that's recently. where it all it all began. Was in my spare bedroom in uh, in an apartment in Greenfield. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Well, well, funny, funny thing is, Fran, that I'm originally from Long Island prior to <laughs> prior oh. to here. Yeah, out uh, in Suffolk okay. County. Yeah. Strong yeah. Island. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, no, I never called. <laughs> where are you? Wrong from? Island. That's what I think. Where, where? Oh. Where are you from? Uh, a small town uh, called Northport, just uh, Huntington is, is yeah. the... I, I know where if... Northport is. I'm from Southampton. Okay. But Suffolk County is the... Yes. yes. So you're, yes. you're out in the eastern part of the island a little more. So. Cool. Northport. Yep. I've been there before. <laughs> you East Coasters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> California. Hey, this this boring California boy here. California. That's okay. Yeah. We'll forgive you. Yeah. yeah, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if you guys could share a little bit of that journey because um, we've heard, we've talked to and heard from people who are doing this part time. They're doing it, you know, on the side of another full time job. But uh, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit how you went, went from the transition of doing it on the side as part time to jumping in full time. Well, the, the best way to do it, to go from part time to full time is to move all the way across the country so that the job you had before that was taking the other part time is now no longer and you're unemployed. So now you have to do this full time. Yeah. That's a good strategy. So that's what we did. We really, um, when we got here six years ago is when like all other 
you know, factors kind of stop being distractions. So we just really yeah. committed to full time. We were doing, um, you know, we each had other kind of side gigs that we were doing um, up until we moved. And it was just a, a nice way to make a clean break. So that was pretty critical. And then um, we needed more space because it was kind of growing and the apartment wasn't growing. And so, you know, we kind of were up against, well, we, we kind of need to look at something different and maybe we can look at a different part of the country too. So, um, so in that way, like we kind of forced ourselves into full time, which just kind of up the ante maybe a little bit, but it was really inspiring because it was all new and exciting and that was really fun. So that's one way to go from part time yeah. to full time. Become a monk, like move somewhere where you don't know anybody yeah. or, and you still don't, you know, it's interesting when you typically move across country, you, you're going for a job or for someone or whatever, but you end up taking a job somewhere where you, you meet people and whatnot. Yeah, no. Not when you're starting your own business. So it's like, we're still like, we're, we're here in the middle of nowhere in the desert. So it's like, there's no distractions and uh, we can just, you know, the conditions are also perfect for soap making as well. It's so dry and arid here. They cure even faster. And, and you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it couldn't be a better location. Yeah. However, we were looking at uh, New Mexico at first. Mm -hmm. We somehow ended up here. <laughs> yeah, we kind of ended up here and, and sort of as maybe a stopover and we'd go someplace else. But then we just got so busy working every day. Um, it's just, you know, it, we've just been really focused. So it just worked out. This place is great and it's really affordable. And it just gave us all of the things we needed to be um, completely immersed in the business, which we made a decision, you know, we want to just try to give this everything we have, um, you know, for as long as we can and see what we can make out of it. So that was really the strategy, um, kind of like letting go of, you know, a, a little bit, not having a big social life or not having a whole lot of like other distractions, honestly, it does make a big difference. And not taking a vacation in eight years. We've never like, taken a vacation. Yeah, we've never taken like our own vacation. <laughs> not really. Like last year was the yeah. closest time we had, but we went on a cruise with a friend. We were not cruise people. We, I don't even like cruises. My friend wanted, was begging us to go. So it was like, you know, it was someone else's vacation we were invited on, but that was the first time it was like, oh my God, we're leaving, you know? So we just worked our tails off. You know, interestingly enough, also, um, when we first moved out here, we converted our garage into our shop, but we only had that, what was it, six, six months? months? About six months. Yeah. And then we had to start renting a facility. We were growing. And we were growing that fast and that rapidly. And uh, now we actually own our a facility, our own building. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was, it's been, you know, this, what anyone who says is a, you can do a four hour work week is lying to you. If you he work your tail us, off. <laughs> he keeps us going at a pretty rapid pace yeah. here. So we're just trying to keep up. Yeah. Um, everyone's trying to keep when up. When <laughs> I say we, uh, you know, me, and then we have um, some staff that we have our employees. So um, we have three wonderful women who work with us and um, yeah, we're just always, there's always, always things to do. So it's great because it just, you know, it's never a dull moment, really. No. It keeps going. What would the present day be had you kept moving with New Mexico? Because that would change the company name. <laughs> like, you know, New Mexico. Well, Mex no, or, not really. No, not no. Really. New Mexico doesn't actually come from, I, I mean, as, as oh, it, oh. there's like Is three it? meanings behind it. Uh, okay. there's, um, well, yeah, okay. So we are close to Phoenix, but we're not in Phoenix. It's more like when her and I joined our companies together, we were born again out of the ashes you know like the phoenix um whereas <laughs> like like from the x-men right that phoenix yeah, exactly that phoenix, yes, yeah. know your audience uh, or the mythical bird you know oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait that's... what's that um <laughs> the and then also you know the birth of soap i mean soap was the you know there's a myth that it was born uh like the phoenix out of ash as well through a, a an eruption an erupting volcano it was the lava was mixing and mingling with ash and so on and so forth and animal fats and soap was accidentally created. So there's that in there as well. So there's like three things going on with the name, but I, you know, where I grew up, Phoenix was a popular name. I grew up next to a place called Fort Phoenix, which was a fort built during the uh, uh, civil uh, during the revolutionary war as well. So it's always been in my life here and there. Um, but in fact, it's there I am standing at Fort Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> that and, hat, that safari hat. Yeah, oh yeah, we're not fooling around. Life's an adventure, <laughs> my friend. But um, yeah, so that's really, but yeah, it's easy to assume that it's, it's from just, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, which also makes perfect sense. It makes it easy to tell people the name. Yeah. Phoenix Shaving. 
But then when people right. are in Phoenix, they're like, where are you? And it's like, oh, Not about that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I, I learned something new. <laughs> I was, yeah, I just always thought it was as part of the locations since you guys were. A little bit. Things are never that clear with us. Like, even, I mean, from soap names, from labels, from everything, uh, there's always something deeper going on or something, you know, there's, for those with eyes to see, I suppose. <laughs> as far as, yeah, you guys have been doing this, you know, um, six years as Phoenix, eight years in, in the long run and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, it's a huge decision to just leave everything and, and start from scratch and anything. Were you both kind of uh, in agreement together? Did someone have to, like Fran, did you have to kind of like, you know, like pull uh, on Dougie's leash and stuff like that and just be like, hey, let's do this? Or, or was it just like, let's, oh, no. let's no. go for it. <laughs> Let, let's go for it. It was my, it was my suggestion, but I, I literally went out, I mean, I think it was March and there was a blizzard and I had the flu and we were in Massachusetts and there was snow and I was like, hey, you want to move to Arizona? And he <laughs> said, sure. And six weeks later, we were in Arizona. Yeah, that's, I kid that's you pretty not. Much how I, don't, I don't take time to think of stuff. I mean, like too, mo too long anyways. Uh, I just jump on stuff yeah. and uh, that's pretty much. I was surprised that. Well, I looked, mean, actually there so was a pause. I did look out the window and watch the snow fall for a little bit. And I was like, okay, let's do this. He wants to get in on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, ever since everything, you know, that's been going on, uh, what's the state of the union, I guess, as, as far as Phoenix is concerned, you know, like, like um, you guys are seemingly are just coming up with a, all sorts of new products all the time, not just like scents, but like the lineup is just kind of crazy, you know, as, as far as I've seen. Yeah. So this guy is like a font of creativity and probably has, I don't know, 10 to 25 new ideas every week. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Like he just has this inexhaustible, like, well, he draws upon for new ideas. He's always thinking about, how could something be done differently or better or more, you know, we just, we're always trying to take like a slightly different tack. Um, and, and also acknowledge and pay homage to stuff that's come around before that isn't around and bring attention to, um, you know, the history of shaving, which is important to us. So it's a mixture of like, you know, just history and innovation. And I think that kind of sums up just sort of like how his brain works. I mean, yeah really like um you know we'll we'll go to antique stores and and different you know we'll look at stuff all the time and we'll try to see what's out there but then gosh you know how could we put a spin on it make it a little different um and also make it like really useful for somebody and bring some value uh back into shaving for people so um but you can't really like teach that level of creativity it's just sort of like Jeez, it's always like, my whiskers. no it's true it's just like you know it, it's amazing because you know we'll be talking about something new or something different and he'll ask me well what do you have and i'm just like i don't know i don't know and every once in a while i come up with something but i mean it's just like never no ending. she comes up with a lot of stuff she's being modest yeah sometimes but you know it's just it, it's really just sort of getting your brain into that however somebody needs to do it to tap into that create creative part for some people it's writing something down every day like doing drills or whatever and um i just think like we've kind of come up with a system that sort of provides a good incubator for new ideas just by what we're exposing ourselves to all the time and yeah and i feel like we're doing a service and not for years like with our reboots and whatnot i've always wanted to bring back you know i always want to reboot and bring back vintage razors and stuff that I collect and can't find anymore. When you do find it, it's hundreds of dollars. And like, I really wanted to bring that back to everybody, like, uh, like almost like a custodian of like these, these classic things that don't exist anymore from scents, you know, fragrances to brushes to razors. And I think, I mean, we've been doing this for years now. I think we really kind of turned the wet shaving world on its head with that and gave other people th stuff to think about as well. And we're like, yeah, that actually makes sense. And you see other people doing it as well now. So I see us shaping the landscape of wet shaving. Or we have actually, mm -hmm. despite, you know, I mean. And, and asking people, like we get at this point. Which is great. 
we get a lot of feedback from customers about what, you know, what they love and, and they tell us like, Oh, it'd be cool to see this or it'd be cool to see that. You know, we just, we have just a lot of people who are, um, you know, contributing ideas. I mean, way more than we could ever possibly do, but that's also really been great and helpful because they'll give us constructive feedback about new products or new sense or, or just different ideas. And, and extremely honest. These people yeah. are people, you know, wet shavers. We're very honest. So but it's like, all, all very like positive and, and helpful. Oh yeah. And just trying, everybody's just trying to have a better experience all around. So that's a super satisfying way to, you know, um, kind of feel like you're, you're listening to your audience and you're trying to bring out something like new and unique. And it's just like, we're just in a really good kind of sweet spot right now. It's been really great. It's taken us years to get here. To get there. <laughs> yeah. yes. It's taken about eight years to get here, yeah. but I mean like, it, and it's been a lot, there's been a lot of an uphill battle. I'm sure I don't have to say that, but I mean, uh, but we just keep, keep, you know, approaching everything. And we keep waking up every day and we have this job yeah. that we do. And we have to try to, be better than we were yesterday, you know? It's like... Yeah, there's no days off. There's no days off. <laughs> yeah. But, but I love it. it. It definitely sounds like a, a very rigorous schedule. Um, I, I'm very curious, actually, since because of how long you guys have been doing it, and the fact that I really do feel like that PAA is a great jumping on point for a new wet shaver, just the fact that you can get a whole setup, right, of your razor, your brush, soap, splash, and then, and then if you want to get more stuff. Pomade, EDP, <laughs> uh, air Pre freshener for your car. I don't know. Yes. If that's and media. Nice. And media. If you want to learn how to use those as well. You know, we have you know, years and years of media yes. watch as well. No, that, that's, that's very true. Right? Whether they're tutorial, informational, it's, it's there and on, under this one, one brand. So, um, yeah. so the question in this is, I'm curious what you guys think as far as growing the hobby currently, right? Because more and more there are, the, the artisan scene itself is, is, is thriving, I'd say, but I'm sure you've heard too, some people say it's saturated. Now, whether you agree with that or not, regardless, I'm curious, what, what do you think are the elements that, that we need to grow this hobby further? Uh, I think anyone that's been paying attention to what we've, we've been doing can pretty much use that as, as a blueprint. And I don't mean that in a toot your own horn kind of way. I mean, I think it's effective. We're bringing new people into the hobby every day, and not just for our brand, for every brand out there, for every artist and for I mean, weekend warrior artisans that are, you know, working out of their kitchen still and to the bigger brands as well. We're bringing in, we're bringing in people for everybody. And uh, I think more people need to do that, you know, just find their space within the niche and you know, so many people seem to be doing the same things mm -hmm. and it's like they're scrambling and it's like, no, there's, there's things we need in this hobby. There's parts of the media that's missing. Like I'm, you know, we had a podcast, we had everything. And it's like, I could, it wasn't sustainable. So it's great, good to see other people doing that. Now what you guys are doing is awesome, but it's like even the big shave West, <laughs> like all I ever want to do as a young wet shaver was go to a big shave festival, like a, a shaving event. Like that would be so awesome, but it didn't exist. So it's like, great. I have to make this happen. So I, you know, I still can't attend one. I have to throw one to attend it. Now it's like you guys are having a wet shaving plot. I can, be, you know, so it's just, it, it gives me hope that other people are picking up the torches or other people are doing these things now. And that's what we need to keep doing and continue to do. So, you know, kudos to you guys and to anyone else listening that decides to do something similar. And I think um, people bringing themselves into however they're going to contribute to wet shaving. So like if you're going to do a, a podcast or if you're going to make soap or if you're going to have a forum like you know like letting that be a reflection of who you are that's you know just like your that show, like shows your interests and you know like clearly we have sort of a theme if someone visits our site there's robots and there's like atomic age um imaging there's spaceships there's like it's just very fun and it's you know interesting and dynamic and other people might be really into some other genre and, and trying to bring that forward in the work that they do, whether it's a product or creating content or whatever, bringing who you are into that just infuses more of you and, and your passion. And I think makes it more interesting. It's more human and real. And I think that, you know, people, maybe there's like a tendency for folks to, see what's out there and try to be like it and forget what, what they 
what is their unique thing that they can bring into wet shaving, right? Like what, what are they, what makes them special and different and fun? And why would people want to like, look at that? So, and we all have these bigger lives outside of wet shaving. So infusing some of that part of who we are into, into anything that anybody's doing in this community, I think is real positive because it just helps people. It's disarming. It helps you create connections that, you know, sometimes you're drawn into somebody, not because of wet shaving, but because you share something else in common, but then it invites them and gives them permission to participate maybe in wet shaving too. Yeah. It also strengthens your brand and it makes your job easier when you're doing something that involves all of your passions it's easier to get up in the morning and do it every day. That's why we we work every day. Yeah, yeah that's how we work. That's everything we're interested in is combined in this business. And I think it shows. So I mean, like, yeah. that's what people need to realize. I think. <laughs> Anyways, that's I what works for a, me. I think it's important because you can't. You got to just. It's such a pleasure and a privilege to get up every day and work for yourself and you can put so much more of your energy into that, but like the more it is really a reflection of who you truly are. I mean, it's just, it's great. Um, and I think it, it helps it stay fresh for you too, because we all have our different particular things we love. Yeah. Kind of along those same lines too, what what do you think can be done? Whether you know it's uh, specific to, uh, to your brand or just others, just getting like getting new, wet shavers, period. Not people who are already in the hobby, but I feel like just to bolster the numbers, right? Um, not even to the level of like hardcore attend a convention kind of folk, but just say hey, switch over from the cartridge, check out this, bro you, you know, like get into traditional wet shaving. Um, do you think there's like, there's unexplored territory as far as how we can reach folks that way? Heck yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we, we do what we, but it's just, what's available to us. Like I'll do conferences outside of wet shaving and sell our products there. And there's nothing like that in the world because you're talking to people that don't know what you're talking about. So their eyes get wide when you start talking to them. If I go to a shaving event, I'm talking to people that already know about this and it's like, Oh yeah, well, but feather blades and it's like but people hearing it for the first time. Are like, Oh my God, tell me more. So that appeals to me, you know? Um, so events like that, but I mean, there's all types of stuff going on all over the world that you can take advantage of, be there selling your products that are talking about your products, or again, picking up a camera. Um, doesn't have to be on YouTube, could be on Vimeo, could be on another platform uh, or another app. I mean, there's new apps popping up every day. Uh, take advantage of the new, me the new free media that's out there and the new platforms that are on offer to spread the wet shaving word. Um, but I mean, I'm also, I, was it last year? Last year I was on over 100 podcasts uh, I just got myself out there, tried to get on shows, talking about wet shaving, trying to spread the wet shaving word. Um, but again, I want to see it grow. I want to see it explode. And I think the more people need to think about that. People typically stop when they're done making the soap. That's, that's, that's all they're going to do. And uh, it's like, no, you got to nurture this. It's, it's a small niche. Like you got to be part of it. You got to be an integral part of this. Otherwise you're just, your weight. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think well, I guess it's not for everybody. Well, I mean, there are introverts and there's extroverts too. We have to take into consideration. So again, this is what works for me. And I can only speak for what works for me. Uh, as the, an introvert, Fran may have more insight on that. But for me, I think I, we just need to get out there. We need to find what works for us to get the word out there. Some people are better at writing. So a blog. Some people are better at getting in front of the camera. So again, back or, to the or just like, what are the things that help you become interested in something new or persuaded to try something different? You know, like, what is that for you? Like what, what kind of, what kind of content or media or whatever do you turn to, yes. um, you know, uh, to learn about something and maybe like, what is your starting off point? What do you need to see, feel, smell, experience before you're just ready to try? And a lot of producers or content producers can can answer those questions for themselves and say, well, what was it for me? Because everybody's got a little bit of a different story, like a fingerprint. Your experience is just a little different than somebody else's, but it probably could bring people in that I couldn't access because I'm not you. So again, it just speaks to individuals just trying to connect with each other and, and share whatever, you know, whatever resonates with them. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been an interesting, you know, journey for us. And I think, I think people, it's easy to talk to the converted, right? <laughs> people who are really, cause you see these, these people are just like crazy about wet shaving, but, but then we do go to these other, um, 
these other audiences who are just like, what, you know, like, so it's we awesome. have, so we have pomade and we have mustache wax and we have shampoo bars and we have body soaps and we have shavings, you know, and we have really cool looking razors. Like, what are these? You know, it's like, and everybody's going to look and pick up something different and smell it and have different questions. Or they look at the cube and they're like, oh my gosh. And it's know? exciting. It's like, it's, it's infectious. Like their, yeah. their excitement, it makes me excited again. And I'm like even more like, and you're never gonna believe this. You can still shave the 75 year old razor. And you know, you don't have to buy mine. You can go on eBay and find this one and that and it just gets me going all over again. I love that. And you know, and once, and because of this, because we go out there and actively seek out new, new folks uh, to introduce to um, shaving, um, you know, there was one person that said, was talking about something, us and another artist, and they were like, well, you guys share the same audience. It's like, no, we don't. We are, you know, we do participate in the wet shaving world, but we have a bigger audience outside the wet shaving world too, which helps us do what we do. But that's, was, we fought for that, you know? <laughs> like, we really, like, got out there and, and yeah. hit, well, hit the ground running pretty much when we realized that, you know, you can only do so much in the forums and whatnot, and forums gonna love you one day and hate you the next or they it, that possibility is there it's just not a great foundation to set up your business on so you, that informed us that we need to go out there and do stuff as well so luckily we're into that <laughs> i mean and it works yeah the outreach is the outreach is critical there's tons of people who a, a year from now two years from now today don't know anything about wet shaving and haven't tried it there's always people coming in like the idea that there's any sort of limit is like to me i don't see how that's yeah. I, don't, I don't see it at all you see you see people that operate with scarcity mindset and it's like some of the choices they make or things that they say or whatever the way that they just act sometimes it's like no this isn't main street we're not competing for for just the people on main street we have the world you know what i mean like that's our audience i'm asleep and i'm still selling soap at two in the morning because we have the world you know like people gotta realize it's huge and if, and if they're not like for, for a soap maker, if they're not buying your soap or purchasing your soap or interested in your brand, they just haven't, they don't have, they, there's not a reason for them to do that. And if you think that they would get something out of using your thing, well, then you have to figure out a way to tell them that. And you can't just go up to say, here, buy my soap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not going to do it. But if it's, if it's meaningful, then you know you you have to learn how to talk to people and and reach them and 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 also like you know we have a, a good partnership because he is more extroverted and I'm more introverted so like we really balance each other out so you know I'm a little better at like one-on-one -on -one conversations and and like not that he's not good at it but like you know just 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 like listening to stories answering questions you know and maybe I can answer a question to somebody more clearly than he could just because of my personality is a little different and vice versa. So we try to make sure like when we're talking to people, especially when we're at a big event where it's not a shaving event, it's some other type of event that we're both engaging people. And like when you're face to face with people, it, it, that comes really naturally, right? Like you, you just have natural, like abilities to talk to some people more easily than others so we try to you know like if he's, if he's really um you know having these amazing conversations with these people there's always going to be folks that are gonna be a little more comfortable talking to me because maybe i'm less like you know maybe you're not dressed up like david Bowen. i'm less of an explosion yeah, right yeah, like, yeah. i'm dressed up as an astronaut i'm a little more this conversation with somebody you know yeah. it's the curly stash it's so intimidating you know? <laughs> yeah, right. it's, it's a little like, more really? yeah. it's unapproachable <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It intimidates, <laughs> no doubt. And it's uh, we've seen it all. We've made every mistake there is. I mean, like we've run the the, the gamut yeah. when it in when it comes yeah. to starting a business from scratch. Like when we started, when we started, there was like what five other artisans on the scene. Like there was no role models, no blueprint, no nothing. Well, like, we, we were making up and, as we and, went, and we were like not. You know, it wasn't like we had this like amazing we didn't have a cohesive idea for anything right? no we weren't even the same thing for a while i mean it was just it just was born out of like an interest and attempts and and just sort of seeing how everything would kind of go and it really was very natural and so it really yeah synergy when synergy shaving soap when i met first met synergy shaving soap that that was never meant to be sold. I mean, that was the whole intent for me making that was to draw people back to my blog 
howtogrowmustache.com. That's, that was the name of the soap, howtogrowmustache.com. That's a horrible name for a shave soap. There was no forethought in that at all. Um, so it just was a happy accident, but it all happens like this. How do you navigate that? You know, it was really bizarre how fast everything started moving. Yeah. It was amazing. It was. And I was fresh back in the country. I'd been out of the country for years too. So it was like. And we had just like started dating yeah. again. Oh, really? Like we. Well, yeah, we dated. A year, a, an age, a lifetime ago in college. And then we lived separate lives for a really long time. And we got back together. So that, that coincided with all this, this stuff. So. Oh, yeah. We've basically been together as long as we've been in business. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's weird. So that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, so that's been going pretty good. <laughs> so wait, so, so exactly how long was it after after starting dating again? Did you decide to to go with forth on this venture? Like I don't know, a week or two. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, I, well, I, I'd already been doing. Uh, I, I, I. Yeah, we kind of had our own things happening. Yeah, so, you know, it's like you start dating you dating someone and you you don't you yeah know, like. I had my own thing and yeah. she had her own thing and then it kind of became our thing. Yeah. And that's when it really, so it's really like when we moved to Arizona, that was a huge shift for us. Like, okay, we're making a commitment to the business and each other and, and, you know, to become this, this unified thing because, um, it was way too confusing. Otherwise yeah, confusing just, for us, confusing for everyone else involved, confusing we, people not involved. It was just confusing. We just <laughs> didn't. Yeah. We didn't have a plan per se, but we just said, okay, let's, things are growing and changing and, and let's, let's try some, let's try this. And if it fails terribly, then we'll go, you know, like whatever, but like, let's give it a try. Yeah. Um, so, and that it seems to be working out, I think. And I know you have a lot of people on here that are doing it part-time and I'll, I'll tell you one thing for me, I didn't, if, had it not been for my, my old boss and mentor, I probably still would have been working for him. Cause a lot of the times you're so close to the project that you're working on and beginning that you don't see when you need to leave your day job. You'll never know unless someone outside of you tells you to. And he You're did, he always going to be too scared to totally let yeah, go. Yeah, he said, you need to go. And I was like, are you firing me? He's like, no. He's like, you've got your own thing going. You've got to get out there and do it else. You're not going to have time to. And, da, 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 da. and I was like, it was the best gift. I didn't really know how to take it at the time, but like until years later or a year later, I was like, he was totally right. Because I probably, had he been in any other type of boss, I would still be working for him, you know, but he was, he, you know, I guess loved me enough to let me go to sort of, sort of speak. And it was the best thing, best gift anyone could ever yeah. give me. So I, anyone, I, I hope everyone else is lucky enough to have people like that in their lives that can tell them, Hey, you need to focus on this. That will believe that can believe in them. Like, you know, and, and I think it's getting easier for people to be more like that with the way the, you know, with the, the, the internet and whatnot, the way the playing field's been leveled when it comes to starting your own business and so on and so forth. Before I uh, left, I mean, when I was in the country, before I left and lived in Central America, you, we didn't have this. When I came back, I came back to an Etsy world and it was totally different. Like all the ideas I had years ago, like I could do this, I could do that. I was thinking, I had an Etsy mindset before Etsy existed, but it was, it never saw fruition because it didn't exist yet. So when I came back, we, I was like, this yeah. is perfect. We can do this now. So I mean, And that's how we started on Etsy. Um, yeah, we started on Etsy. We did, yeah, so that, that's how things The happened. hallway for, to our apartment was loaded with like back stock and boxes and everything. It was a good thing we didn't have anyone living on the third floor at the time because they wouldn't have been able to get up the stairs. Like we just totally outgrew that apartment. But I mean, it was like, I can't believe this is working. Like, I mean, it really, it was amazing. And I think at some point you kind of just like, there's never going to be, like nobody could tell you like, okay, this is the moment you decide that you're full time. This is, these, this is the amount of money you need to have saved. This is the situation you have to have in your life. There's always, and there's always going to be a million reasons why not to do something. So yeah. um, it's so easy to get discouraged or talk yourself out of it. And, and it's really just comes down to like, you know, fear and like asking yourself, can I, you know, can I take this risk? And I think mostly like, if, you know, if it's, it's a risk you, you feel you have the energy for, it's not going to like interfere dramatically with somebody else's well being. That's always an important thing. You know, like we don't have kids and we don't, ha you know, we just, we just didn't have a lot of other things kind of really holding us back except ourselves. And, um, through the short time that we had, you know, been, you know, doing things around each other and, and starting what we started, 
I think we recognize like, okay, I think we have as good a chance of anybody. And I think it boiled down to, you know, um, just a lot of hard work. And because you could come out with 50, 100 products and probably one or two is going to be like a real home run. That's how we started. And you (laughs) have to just keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. And a lot of, um, you know, business people who started their businesses from scratch are going to tell you the same thing their business was built on a pile of failures. And then they had these like successes that came out of all the learning that happened through those attempts that weren't really what they wanted, but they knew they try. Okay. It's always, it's just a process of slow refinement. Um, just like, you know, and we were in the right place at the right time too. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the wet shaving world was really like, it was just, it was being born. I mean, I'd say it really picked up in 2007, maybe. And by the time we hit the scene, it was like, we were really, the conditions were perfect for, for us to do what we're doing. I, I, it would be very tough, I think, for someone to do that now. Yeah, the opportunity back then was really, um, we, we were, there was some luck for sure, for, you know, went at the time. Um, and we took it, you know, we're able to take advantage of that because it's a different, it's just different now. Um, no, yeah. There's like 300 so. artisans out there. From, I mean, I send out invitations for the big shape every year. And so it always, you know, it blows my mind how many people I'm sending out invites to. And it's like, so over 300 now, a lot of these people are hobbyists too. So you got to keep that in mind. A few, a few of us are full-timers and we're competing with hobbyists and we're selling our stuff for the same price, you know, the same industry standard prices too. So where can people competing with people that don't have an overhead, don't have staff, so on and so forth. So it's like, I don't, I lost my train of thought. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> well, we also, we get, we buy in bulk. So we probably, you know, I mean, but, um, the conversation has kind of gone along one of the questions I had. Okay. So if oh, you could, okay. in, you know, like take in with everything that you've learned and you've talked about that, you have to make mistakes because you're going to learn from those and, and do those things. Right. So with all of the things that you've had so far, if you could maybe just go back uh, to six years ago and tell, you know, six years ago, Douglas and Fran, just like one thing of a heads up, you know, like what would it be? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. what could I tell my past self? Yeah, yeah, just six from six years ago, you know. Oh, like, six, I could go back for I could go back eight years. Ago. I know what yeah, I sure, I know what sure. I say. So I say this to I say this to people that you know wanna want to start a shave business or want to start anything, you know, like I really want to work for myself. And I, and I get that, that idea. I love it. And I just tell people like, you know, in reality, like, I mean, anybody can do anything. It's not really that hard to, you just have to learn how to do whatever it is you do. Um, but what you have to give of yourself to probably be as successful as you really want to be is usually you have to be super unreasonable. Like you don't get to say, Oh, well, it's Sunday. I don't really want to work or I got to take, you know, my kids really need me. You know, it's like, there's always going to be things that are going to pull you, but um, the amount of work, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. The amount of work that we have literally put into this business is unbelievable. And most people, would have walked away six years ago. And, but we're crazy. And not even tried it because it just, I look back and I think, oh my God, I don't know how yeah. on earth. I mean, even just the moving and the, you know, um, being in the warehouse and it's hot in the summer and we couldn't afford the air conditioning and we had to like, I mean, it's just like everything and all the time and then events and it just, I, I don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, but a lot of people it's it's easy to look at it from the outside and think it's like yeah. sexy and it's easy and it's but it's literally gonna like rip you down and build you back <laughs> up into a completely different person yes yes it definitely will do that that's like, what i say to people <laughs> it, it's kicked my ass like oh i mean yeah i have gray hairs in places i didn't know you could grow gray hairs uh ulcers, so on and so forth. Like, I mean, it really, it will. Kind of put you through a, 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 you know, I mean, you can, and you can come out the other side of it better off for sure. And I think like, but you've got to be very conscious of what's going on to do that. Otherwise it it can take you down. I mean, we went through the worst of, of everything and we've went through the best of everything too. And I'm just, all I can say is I'm just very grateful to still be here doing what we do because we love it. And it's only recently, maybe in the past year or two that like, 
I've personally felt like, okay, I can take a step back for a second or like, you know, I've had some like, you know, family things to go take care of or whatever. And I'm at the point, thankfully, not just, not just in the business, but mentally, because we stayed on this tight, like, you know, this, we just work and work and work in like this freight train that won't stop that I'm finally able to just be able to take a step back and, and kind of like, go get my head into other things that are important and need attention in my life. And I'm grateful for that. And I don't feel like I'm abandoning my business because the, 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 the trick of giving everything you have to one pursuit is that you feel guilty when you have to, you know, step away from that. So like, we're just, we're trying, you know, we're always trying to find that balance, but it's always like, it's always weighted in favor of, getting up and going to work i'm never trying to find that balance actually yeah no he's not well that's not true you want to take your trip so yeah that's true yeah so anyway (laughs) it's been a lot of work (laughs) it's been a lot it's been a long 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 i wouldn't trade it for anything i really wouldn't but you know and there's also you know people gotta remember uh, uh, to piggyback on what fran was saying is it looks glamorous on the outside and it can be but there's also like two types of people in the world there's people that can definitely work for themselves can definitely stay on task, stay on point, get done what needs to get done. But there's also people that can't work for themselves. They need to work for someone else because they don't have what it takes to work for themselves. And the biggest, you know, the terrible, most terrible thing in the, in the universe is not knowing which person you are and how you find out. And you usually know, somebody, you, somebody close to you can tell you which person you are because they know and yeah. they could tell like that person like, oh yeah, you're, you're a self-starter. You have enough self-discipline you'll be able to do it or somebody else like, no, you work better with structure and you know, kind yeah. of schedule and stuff, and stuff like that. Know. You know, that somebody else just imposes. Yeah. Fran, what you were sharing about, especially was kind of dispelling that myth, right? That um, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life, which not just you, not I true. think <laughs> any, yeah, anyone with that entrepreneurial spirit, uh, I really do think in talking with you guys that, you know, it really shows and, um, and what we can see on the outside, you know, the, the marketing efforts, the videos, the podcasts and whatnot that you guys, yeah, this, this is encompassing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is your life. It's 24 uh, seven. We're, I'm up at two in the morning answering customer emails and whatnot. You know, it's just, it's all consuming, but I love, we love every second of it is what it all comes down to. So mm-hmm. that's what makes it work for, for, uh, for someone else, it might not work, you know? I love almost every second of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, every once in a while. Almost every second. No, I love every second of it. It's been really great. I'm just amazed by the fact, like, I wake up every day and I'm like, wow, this really isn't a dream. This is really, this is really happening. Like, I, I just feel very blessed to be here and do what we do. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. You know, earlier... You had talked about, you know, going to like, you know, shows and things like that with people that are not in the hobby and, you know, they kind of get wide eyed and, you know, like just like uh, hearing about it. But obviously, Big Shaves West, you know, kind of talking about it. How um, how do you continue to reach out to to the hardcore wet shaver, to the to the people that are willing to drive or fly, uh, you know, to you guys to, to put on something like this? You know, every year how many how many have seen it <laughs> yeah you must yeah. have seen it i mean i blast the forums more than i like to uh just spreading the word but you know honestly the reason why i say this year i think is going to be the best attendant yet is we've created a street team we're passing out flyers it's spring training in phoenix too so we're, we're getting people that aren't in the wet shaving world like hey this is a male grooming traditional shaving event like and it's free so these guys are in town right now so we're hitting them up as well uh, so that's one thing that's new to us this year, reaching out more to the locals as well, you know? So that goes back to your other question about how to spread the word. Stuff like that, throwing more of these events. In fact, uh, anyone listening that's thinking of having a meetup or starting their own little meetup soon, remember there's guys out there everywhere and all, we all shave. So, I mean, like it can come down to just making flyers sometimes or passing out like you're in a band. Anything, everything I've learned about marketing in life comes out of being in a band. It really does. And it probably explains so much to people. Like I was the guy making the flyers. I was the guy, I mean, like we used to, I used to take every college town has those stack of newspapers, you know, with the college you know, the shows and whatnot that's going on. I would take a stack of those, bring it in my car, stuff each one with one of our flyers and then bring it to another box. Take that, the fresh newspapers out of there, put the ones I just stuffed in there, then move on to the next and stuff them, then move on to the next box. 
so it looked like, you know, it was like fake it till you make it. Another thing we would do is I would go into um, record stores and be like, hey, do you have a local section? And they'd be like, yeah, we have a local section. I'd be like, hey, here's my band. I'll drop off five CDs for you. Let me know how they sell, yada, yada, yada. And meanwhile, during the week, I would send friends in to buy the album, you know, and rave about it at, at, at the time. So I'd come back in a week, look, how'd it go? Oh, we sold out, it was amazing, da, da, da. Do you have 10, can you draw off 20? You know, like, yeah, no problem. So it helped, you know, it's just guerrilla marketing. It's always, because, you know, you believe in yourself, you believe in your product, you want to get it out there in everyone's hands and it, where it should be. So um, it all came out of like, I think that, you know, the artwork for the flyers and whatnot, like it just, that was my approach. And there was some stuff that, cro- there's some part of the guerrilla marketing that does cross over. And there's some part that definitely, you know, parts that definitely don't and uh, maybe are questionable when used online. But um, again, learn from my mistakes, people. Uh, Fran, uh, you're more the introvert while Douglas is the extrovert. So how is the Big Shave Swiss for you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you got to remember, I'm like the stage manager too. So like I'm yeah. hardly behind the table, which is something I want to, I want to fix that this year. I always say, every year I say this, I want to be behind the table more. Because I don't get to talk to as many people because I'm running around like a crazy person trying to make like every artist and like, is everything cool? You okay? You need a water? And I'm running around getting them stuff. I had to like, last year was the first year we had volunteers, like real volunteers where I could actually tell people to do stuff. But I have such a problem with that. So I'm like, I'm running around still trying to do everything last year. Uh, Meanwhile, volunteers are standing around like, no, they were actually great. So how it is for me is... um... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, right. Hold on. Let me answer this for you, Fran. So what she's saying... It, it only it only took us like fifty minutes to get to that point where I, I'm just gonna leave, just I'm gonna answer. I'm just gonna leave this all in. Put, 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 it on, put it on the friend man. No, I know. Let me just let me just answer this for you. Yeah, yeah. Let me mansplain what Fran does. Uh, well, I'm gonna frame go yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Fran explain it. Yeah. Fran, sir. Oh, I I love it. It's it's actually yeah. It's it's really tiring. This year I have more help, which is good. But yeah, he's he's out you know, dealing with people all day and I'm behind the table. But at this point, we've done so many big shaves all over the place. Like I get to see people once a year that I really love and have been talking to like, you know, customers who've become friends who like, you know, I chit chat with them over email or whatever, and I get to see them. And I love that. Um, It's just a cool, like, I love the fan events where everyone comes in excited because it gets me excited <laughs> about what I do. Like it's really good visual, visceral proof that people love what we do. And it's just, it's like the one day of the year I get to like feel the love like from the shaving community that came all the way to see us and come to our table and smell our soaps. And it's, it's really I mean, it's, ty- it's, it's tiring <laughs> and it's a lot of work and all that stuff. And I get really like nervous. We remember everything and all that stuff, but um, it's really positive for me. So uh, yeah, it's like my little, my little yearly outing to, you know, like good therapy and it doesn't, you know. Do you do the side trips? D- no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> um, no, cause we okay. have Huxley. So part of it oh. is have the dog. So We do board him during the event, but it's also difficult because I'm still kind of trying to, I, you know, if one of us is out, this is typically the problem is, so if he's in Tombstone, Arizona, I kind of need to be around in case somebody shows up and maybe like has questions or needs help or um, I need to deal with something at the hotel or um, I'm usually still packing up boxes from our warehouse to get stuff ready to bring for our table, which we try to bring like he he wants the whole store to come up to Phoenix, um, but that's not possible. So we bring like 95% of it, um, which is a tremendous amount of work. So I typically don't like sleep for four days and then, yeah. you know, and then it's cool, but none of us sleep really for, <laughs> for days. It's but yeah, unfortunately, no, I mean, I just, this year I'm trying to just be prepared sooner ahead of time so that I don't like, you know, fall over at the end of the day like I almost did last year yeah. packing up so we're trying maybe have like you know some like food at the end of the oh, day yeah, yeah. Food be, that would be good this year ginger ale yeah. and you yeah. know Sugar. refreshments but uh no it's great I I look forward to it and um I hope everybody you know comes out and has a great time and um you know I love getting together like where we do it there's all these cool little restaurants all over the place and we you just get together in smaller groups oh and, it's awesome you guys I, need to come it's nice to yeah talk with you really i've already told you like i mean um i probably would but literally my 
son is due on the 22nd, yeah. the week yeah. before. And Did so, you ever go to any in the past, though, at Old Town? No, no. So I wasn't, I wasn't involved in the scene uh, at the time. I think um, I had met, uh, I had met Abraham, uh, you know, and stuff like that over here in California. And I think um, Old Town, uh, it had happened, and it was maybe like that August or September that I met him. And then, uh, okay, and and I think. That was, it might have been the last one there. It was like whatever the last one, you know, because like yeah, within the three. next year or two or something like that, yeah. um, like they, they closed up shop. So, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I mean, but they, like I said, I've gone to a couple of like the smaller, like SoCal, like, you know, meetups and things like that, yeah. which are already, you know, like my, I'm just like, it was like 30 dudes just came up, you know, with soap, you know, like and stuff like that. I can't imagine hundreds of people descending like you know hundreds of people yeah it's pretty wild it's and then if and if, imagine if you know you're just a normal person in that lobby and or, or something and they're just like what's going on this, oh a bunch of yeah soap enthusiasts over here i know that's that's why i'm i'm really curious to see what it's going to be like the mix this year with locals and whatnot too like these people have no idea what they're in for <laughs> they don't i mean like we look like a bunch of nutters half the time. Like we forget, we're so excited about what we do that we forget the rest of the world goes, goes wait, what? You, you take pictures of your shave every day and you post it online. It just sounds nuts. Whenever you try, I try to explain to somebody what we do. They're like, they end up looking at me like I'm just mad. Some people collect baseball cards. Some people are into cars. Some people are into comic books. Yeah. We're Friday into night, what do, what do yeah. we do? We, we sit at home and watch YouTube videos of men shaving their face. And yeah. that, out of context, just sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. but that's what in we context, in that context, sounds context, weird. Context, that's weird. <laughs> Yeah, we don't do that. We all need to take a long, hard look at ourselves. <laughs> we have a podcast talking about soap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's great. We it, builds yeah. it builds character. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd imagine it'd be it's hard to find free time for hobbies and whatnot. But are you able to make time for you know if you have some time for yourselves, what do you what? like to do? Oh my gosh! So, um, well, we go hiking every day. Well, yeah, but that's because I'm in training. That's because he's in training. in training. I go hiking every day, regardless of. But whether it's he's it's in it's walking the dog. It's for it's for Huxley. Yeah. So, I... so we we ha we got the dog, and the dog has been a wonderful thing because he's gotten us out of the house. Um, so I mean, no, not a lot of extra stuff really, but like you know, we just um, you know, like you're always reading. I mean, he oh, so yeah. so everything he does somehow ties back to the business. So even like the books that he reads and he's always trying to think of new ways to kind of come up with stuff and, and I have a dog. So yeah. that, you know. those are our hobbies. <laughs> I mean, I, I, ideally I'd love to be in a rock I mean, and roll band. I, I was, I was a musician for half of my life and uh, now I have no time. I mean, I have an electronic drum kit in my room so I can practice my underwear at two in the morning. But other than that, it's like, he does a lot at two in the morning. I do a lot at two in the morning. So apparently yeah. Yeah. even electronic <laughs> drum kits, you know, the pecking is still very, you know, audible, I can imagine. Yeah, well, yeah exactly. two in the morning, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, the, you know, you just put on like wave machine sound. Yeah, she has an ocean that she listens to, yeah. so it drowns out, no pun intended. Whatever. Whale sounds, okay? Yeah. Whale sounds. Yeah. Whale songs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ten, 10 hours. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, no, there's not a ton of time. Well, again, a bunch of other when you stuff. incorporate everything that you're interested in into your, your business, it kind of like, that's where I, get you know this the, the release for my hobbies like i'm into sci-fi i'm into you know the paranormal and whatnot like i really this stuff is highly entertaining um and just you know trips my trigger so i mean like it's all part of what we do and i think that's where where it works where we can get away with just working all the time because it does involve everything that we're into and also like hobbies that you would have to do anyway like cooking are really good because you got to eat so you might as well get really into cooking that's so true. that's been a good one for me yeah, i nice. mean that's sort of like yeah, yeah me, it works by default he gets to eat i get to cook and <laughs> yeah. eat so it's great for me though because i come home and you know, I could at work. I could be doing any number of things, from you know making soaps to taking out the garbage to writing up invoices to ordering. Th I mean, it's just yeah. crazy. So you know, kind of coming home every day and like chopping vegetables. <laughs> I know it sounds corny, but it's really, really it's, no. It's therapeutic. It's very good. It, 
it's very therapeutic because you know like you're producing something else differently and you literally get to feast upon you know your your work yeah and it's for you it's not for it's someone not for else. else there's no yeah. stress or pressure mm-hmm. there like, yeah and if it comes out bad he, he doesn't you know ever say anything to me about that so everything we're I men do, you know me. like we're, we're appreciative <laughs> no matter what so yeah so yeah and I, I'm the cook of my house, so that that's no. I, I definitely feel you on, on on that sense. It's like centering and really kind of gets you in the right place every day. So that's yeah, perfect. No, it is. I love it. She actually stole it from me. I did. Uh, I was the cook for a while, and then she came home. And I started getting these food boxes, you know, with a prepared meal. Not prepared, but with the different ingredients, raw ingredients and whatnot. Yeah. And. Uh, she kind of just stole that from me. This is over the last like six months. She's just start, started. Actually, it's been longer. It's, Has it been, it's longer? been quite a bit longer. Yeah. So, so yeah, I kind of like cooking has been one area I've been wanting to work on and just get better. And so this has been a good way for me. So now, although now it's yeah. like I have to do it every single day because in this she does that. In this she'll just take stuff away from me. Like it's like all or nothing. So he'll be like, "Well, I'm hungry and I didn't cook." I'd be like, it. I'm responsible for feeding a I'm person responsible. now. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> All right. Lux is really the star of the show. There, yeah. No. <laughs> Anyone who follows what we do or reads some of our sales pages will know that Huxley is a he's a character in the PA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's so happy. Oh yeah. He's what he saved us. Is really he's like a little little Buddha, this guy. Yeah. He's, a good boy. he's like, okay, mommy. Yeah. He really just gives you perspective. Oh. <laughs> no, literally, you want he wants, he wants to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. He wants to play. Yeah. Okay. He's like, all right. Get... Ah. Oh, did you pull the ear your oh, piece? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, he wants you to go this this guy <laughs> hungry stomachs, so Let's close out uh, with just kind of with one more question. So, sure. for for both Douglas and Fran, um, we're kind of, we're into twenty twenty. It's still pretty early on the year, though. So, what are some things you hope to happen this coming year for PAA? Can maybe I'll win the lottery? <laughs> <laughs> maybe and she'll win the lottery. That's what we're I don't know what would happen to PAA. I just I'm not no, sure about yeah. that. Uh, um, yeah, we have a lot of exciting like I always think that every year it gets more exciting but like this year we have so many exciting things we're just we're just working on probably 15 or 20 projects right now um yeah. hopefully some of them will get done in the next uh you know a few months um and that's the thing is when you do everything there's always like stuff on the back burners yeah. like we have a lot of back burners you know you and we're up against companies that do just razors or they do just soap or they do just after we do it all so there's like it's constant like it just doesn't stop (laughs) there's no downtime four times as products four times as long for it to get to market right yeah yeah pretty much so (laughs) four times the fun yeah we just always have a lot of things kind of coming around on the horizon but um i'm excited for his trip not because he'll be gone for a month but because i'm excited to see like like he'll have all these it'll be um, really interesting to see some of the insights and ideas that kind of like happen as a result of this, like, you know, it's just exciting when somebody has been wanting to do something for more than half their life and they finally get to go do it. And that's just really, yeah. I'm really happy I didn't for think him. I was ever going to, so it's, it's kind of amazing. You deserve to go on a nice <laughs> fun trip. And then we get to go to England together and do a lot of fun stuff. So I'm excited for that, but that has nothing to do with Phoenix Shaving. Um, but yeah, it does. we're just, you know, we're just in it and we're trying to just keep it interesting and growing. And, and do I the think, best we can. We just want to make soap and get it to people. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's really, like, this is what we're wired to do and what we want to yeah. do. You know, and we're trying, we're really trying really hard to grow shaving. So um, kind of, we were talking about that earlier. Um, you know, we're just trying to grow our reach and, and, and get, new people who today have no idea that they're going to be shaving by the end of the year and they're going to be falling in love with it and find a whole new way for them to enjoy a part of their day that maybe they don't enjoy very much right now. So that is always on our minds. And when that happens and we get the love letters from customers talking about like, Oh my God, I had no idea. Like that is everything to us. That is, that's actually amazing. We'll get like a letter like that. And it's like, 
and it happens a lot. It's really cool. It, yeah, nowadays it does. Yeah. There was a time when it was we got the opposite letters. Yeah. So uh, it's really like it's. That's that's what we're up to. That's what we want to do. Yeah. Is just get new people, bring some joy to their life through um, shaving because it, it's possible. Yeah, and everything and about that. shaving. You know the history about it, the collecting. Um, <laughs> You know, I'd rather be shaving. I want to see our show grow, uh, <laughs> grow, you know, and falling as well. I really feel like that's another tool to or vehicle to really bring people into the wet shaving fold. Because it's not just guys, sh- it's not a guy shaving. It's not talking in his bathroom. It's history. It's tips, tricks, hacks. It's, you know, the goal was to be kind of like car talk, where even if you weren't in the cars, you could still enjoy listening to the show because it was funny and whatnot. So it's like... I want to see that grow this year. I want to see, I don't know. I just, I, there's another project too. I might become involved in that. I, I can't give you too much information on it right now. And I'm sorry about that, but I know nothing about this. no, she does. She's <laughs> just forgotten because it's not important to her. Sure. But uh, no, th- I mean like this, yeah, it's going to be, 2020 is going to be awesome. It really is. And I think it's going to be the year of the Atar as opposed to last year being the year of the Musk. And I'm not going to say any more than that, but I, I, we'll, we'll revisit this a year from now and see if I was right. But I, there's a lot of new, influences coming in from our you know it used to be i don't know club uh clubman or pinard clubman was like the scent of, of wet shaving and whatnot but now we're seeing some outer influences from all around the world penetrate our, our delicate little you know eggshell of wet shaving and it's it's exciting so i people were saying we were seeing seeing a ceiling in regards to wet shaving how you know it can only grow so much but i think we're just we're seeing these other influences in now and i don't know if it's it's just it's part of the evolution of it and it's exciting to see and be part of that i guess is what i'm saying john and i've actually kind of mentioned this you know like it seems like there's so many um not just so many artisans but you know like people are just like really kind of upping their game and and pushing it and i don't even think we've like peaked on it you know i think we're like it's still ascending you know if 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 anything so uh yeah it is it's, it's it's a bright future definitely Oh, it is. It definitely is. And, and again, there's so many things out there that we need as wet shavers. We just don't know what they are. <laughs> so we need keep needing people to come up with these ideas of what we need and telling us and, you know, introducing them to the, the niche. Um, and I, I see that in, incrementally here. I just used this really cool thing the other day. It's a uh, razor dryer. I didn't know I needed that. It was actually sent to me for a review from this company that's uh, sponsoring the event. But it's a, it, it, it dries your razor. It's the coolest thing because it also uses UV light, so it sanitizes it too. And that's the most interesting thing to me. I, I could care less how it, if owning a razor dryer or whatnot, but it's the fact that I can sanitize it with UV light, which is really cool and something I never would have thought of. So, I mean, stuff like that is interesting to me. And I think we're going to see more of those type of things. I hope we do anyways rather than the same old, same old, same old on top of each other, which we do. We see that too. And, uh, and we'll always see that. But it's the new, interesting, exciting stuff, and it you know from scents to products to hardware to software that is I see it out there, and I see more coming our way, and it's it's again I'm super excited to still be here to be able to experience this stuff. You We're know, still here. We're still here. <laughs> We're very excited to hear how Big West goes. Uh, we hope your your trip sounds very exciting, and the fact that you guys just. You know, don't don't really get to take a break too often. So I hope that's a, <laughs> you know, like it's obviously a big check mark, right? Off off like the life to do list. But also, I hope it's a restorative trip. You know, and, that's you know, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's going to be. I'm yeah, as, as someone that you know that's also into travel and, and loves travel, I mean, yeah, just just live in it, just enjoy it. So both of you, you know. Yeah, Thanks, it's gonna man. be really fun. I'm yeah. Excited. Thank you. Well, yes. Thank, thank you, you so much, Jared. Thank you so much, Jonathan. That I love the fun. show. Uh, you know, I mean, just keep doing it. Keep keep doing it. You know, there's so much you guys can just introduce to folks for the first time. It's really cool, and I, I really respect it. Thank you. And again, I've said it a few times, but thank you, you Douglas and Fran, and Fran as well for your time, uh, just talking with us, kind of going through a little bit, you know, sharing your, your journey thus far, and just your. I don't know your, your drive and enthusiasm for you know just for what you do. Um, you know, I, I just I, it's 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 encouraging and I think it's in, infectious. Thanks That's so much. That's important. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you. This was this was a lot of fun. I don't do a lot of interviews, so thanks for having me. And um, think of it as just a conversation, you know, between yeah. and everything like that. Just a little bit. Yeah. Lovers. But I don't know <laughs> you guys. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it was good. This was this is really fun for me. Yeah. The best one yet. Great. Maybe last last thing. I mean, obviously, like I mean, a lot of people already know where to find you, but for someone that might might be clicking on this uh, suggested view, like where can they find you? Right. Anywhere. Yeah, actually, pretty much. <laughs> like <laughs> ideally, um, phoenixshaving.com is our website. Um, they can find me at support at phoenixshaving.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where I am. That's where she lives. Yes, uh, I live but yeah, there. phoenixshaving.com. And if you're interested in checking out our show, um, check out I'd lather be shaving.com. And if you're interested in more tips, tricks, and hacks when it comes to wet shaving, uh, as well as past podcasts that we've done, um, go to Douglas, what is it, Douglas Smythe channel.com. That'll take you there. But uh, And we're on Facebook at Phoenix Shaving. Uh, Instagram, Phoenix, Instagram. Under, Phoenix yeah. underscore Shaving. We're all over the place. We're pretty easy to find. We're super easy to find, and we're super easy to contact. If there's anyone listening that has a question, concerns, suggestions, so on and so forth, we want to talk to everybody. We love talking to folks. And, we again, we're super accessible when it comes to that. So please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Yep. We can't wait to hear your next exciting shave adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have Thank a great you so much. Time. Have a great night. Thank you. Awesome. Take care, guys. All right. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Lather Talk. You can find links for Phoenix Shaving in the show notes. If you have any questions or suggestions about the show, you can get in touch with us via email, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. If you enjoyed the episode and want to help support the show, you can share, subscribe, or even better, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so that more wet shavers can discover us. We hope you'll join us for next week's episode, where Gerard and I will be closing out the first season of Lather Talk. See you then!